Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily and I like to bring you guys DIY inspiration. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that like button as well. Today is a fun new series that's starting called How Does Your Garden Grow? And I am taking part with these lovely ladies you see here to give you tips and tricks and all sorts of gardening inspiration. Where I live, it is too cold to be planting your garden as of when this video was recorded. So today I'm gonna teach you about planting a potted plant. I also want you to know that there will be a link to the playlist for everybody's videos for their tips and tricks down in the description box. So let's get started. So I'm off to visit one of my favorite local nurseries to get the plants that I need to plant this potted plant for you guys. I feel like if it does freeze, I can pull this plant into my garage, so I feel like I'm safe planting this one. I love to use spikes in my plants to get a good height, so I'm going to grab one of those. The next thing I'm going to grab is one of these dra uh, geraniums. I like to go with the method a thriller, a filler, a spiller. So if you stick with those three things, it's almost no fail. I also like to stick with the classic red, white, and blue color. So I have the red in the geranium, and here I'm gonna pick up my spiller, which is going to be a white petunia. Petunias are very drought resistant, and they bloom all summer long, and they're wonderful, and they do spill out over your pot. So after I get my spiller, I need to move on to the filler. The filler is what is gonna fill all the negative space in your pot. I also need something blue. So I like to use Lobelia, and I actually specifically like Crystal Palace Lobelia. However, if you look at how small these plants are, I was not very happy or comfortable using plants this small because I feel like they would get overcrowded. So I did make a trip to the garden center at Lowe's and they had tons of Lobelia. So it was $1.98 for each little container and so I grabbed two of those. So now that I've found all of my plants, I'm going to need something to plant them in. So we're going to move on to the DIY portion. Shannon from the Daily DIYer made this wonderful porch decoration. If you haven't ever subscribed to Shannon or know who she is, definitely go check out her channel. She is amazing. But I was looking at this wonderful porch decoration she made, which I will link her video down in my description box, and thought I could make something similar, but make it with a planter box at the bottom. So I grabbed two of these garden fencing from Dollar Tree, and I cut them to the size that I'm going to need. So one of them, I'm going to cut the stakes off, and I'm going to cut it completely in half, and that's going to be for the bigger portion. At the top of the planter that I'm making, I just need half of one of these, and I just need the little curly Q part in there, and you'll see what I mean as I cut this out. After I have all of the garden fencing cut out, I need to get my wood all ready and stained. So I did grab some wood while I was at Lowe's. What I grabbed was a eight foot long, one by 12, and then another piece of trim wood that I grabbed. You can get any size that you would like for this and I will put my measurements down below. You can also check out Shannon's video because she does a very good job explaining the different types of wood that she uses as well. So what you're going to need, as you can see, is a long piece of the one by 12 and then three shorter pieces to make the planter box at the bottom. These other pieces are just for trim. So I'm just using some wood glue and then I'm going to use my nail gun to secure these together. Now you guys should be able to see the box starting to come together. I'm so loving how it's turning out. And then I do go in and nail my cross pieces in and I am using wood glue to fix the trim onto the box. I do not nail these in. I just use some clamps and I let them dry for probably about 45 minutes to an hour before I move on to the next step. So you can see how it looks there with them clamped. 
And then this is the trim piece that's just gonna go at the top of my big long one by 12 there. And then I do just clamp that in and let that dry as well. Then I get to come and add in the garden fencing. So I use a combination of E6000 and hot glue. The hot glue is just going to give it that temporary hold. That E6000 is what's going to give it that permanent hold. So you're just going to glue anywhere that you can that touches the wood. If that makes sense, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And then I do just hold that until the hot glue has a very secure hold. And then that E6000 will take hold. It takes about 24 hours for that to fully cure. And I do that on all the pieces of garden fencing. And as you can see, I kind of clamped it into place while I was gluing it. So that way I could make sure that I got it in the exact spot that I needed it to. So now comes for the fun part of planting. So I'm just using some potting soil and I have this old pot that came, um, I bought like a hydrangea bush or something last year, I think that came in this. And so I'm just using this because it was the perfect size and you are not going to see it, if that makes sense. So you're gonna put some potting soil in there and I like to fill it, you know, maybe like two thirds of the way full and then do just kind of a dry fit. I like to put everything in there without taking it out of the pot to kind of arrange it, see how I want it to fit and see if I need to add any more soil. After everything does look good, then that way I can go ahead and start actually planting it. So I'm gonna start with my spike and put it in the back and then I'll take my geranium and I'll put that in front of it. This is giving me my height and my thriller, if you remember my method of the thriller, filler, spiller. And then I'm going to put in my filler after I do this. So you can see with the lobelia that the roots are kind of bound there from being in that pot for so long that it was in. So you can go ahead and kind of break those up as you put them in. That's just gonna let the roots spread out and take hold into the soil. So I put those on both sides. And then because of the size that the uh, pony pack, I think is what these are called, that the petunias come in, because of the size of those, the depth is a lot shorter. I do need to add some dirt before I set those in. I do just want to remind you that down in the description box will be a link to the playlist of everybody else in this garden series video so you can get all of their fun tips and tricks. As we plant our vegetable garden, I plant a salsa garden. I will take you guys on that journey and show you my progress. Like I say, we usually plan around Mother's Day at our house uh, where we live and this video comes out the weekend of Mother's Day so we haven't quite planted it yet and then I also have a farm if you didn't know that about me uh, and we plant a really fun garden at the farm that I'll take you along and show you the progress on that also so I believe that June 1st is the next time that our series will air so make sure that you come back and check that out and see the progress that everything is making and like I say I'll be filming as I plant and everything to kind of take you along that journey and anything else that you guys want to know if you have any comments of things that you would like me to cover or questions that you have or anything please let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to either answer you in the comments or I'll put it in my next video but again just check that playlist down below and listen to these other ladies there is so much fun knowledge and they have some amazing gardens I'm jealous of my friends in the South that already have such amazing gardens going already right now. And then of course I give this a really good drink of water before I move it over into the planter box. I am absolutely in love with how this turned out. I am so excited that Shannon from the Daily DIYer created her piece that inspired me and I'm absolutely loving the planter box at the bottom of this piece. I think this would be such a high-end addition to any porch or patio. It would also look super fun with some vines or something growing up at like a trellis. I don't know. I think this is just so fun. I am so glad that you guys stayed with me today to see me build this and to plant my planter box. And I'm so excited for this garden series so I can take you guys along my gardening journey. Thank you so much for tuning in today and you guys have an amazing day. Do you guys have a favorite plant or flower that you guys like to plant in your flower garden? If you do, let me know what it is down in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.